In this video, I'll go over five main things that helped with my interview and I'll also be answering a few questions from my last video. So if you're an art or design student looking for some answers or advice, then you've come to the right place. Hey guys, I'm Santa Cruz and welcome to my channel. I recently got into UAL Central St. Martins without the help of a college counselor. So I figured that if I could do it, you could definitely do it too. However, I normally post videos about design and business. So if that's what you're interested in, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And with that being said, let's get into the video. The first and most important thing I did was I reviewed my personal statement. Doing so helped me clarify what sort of which strengths I wanted to capitalize on in my interview. For example, on my courses selection criteria, they're looking for somebody who can demonstrate a high level of visual and 3D skill, as well as somebody who is who has a mature outlook and high self-motivation. Therefore, later on, when I was brainstorming basic interview questions, I wrote them in such a way that they would emphasize emph emphasize those criteria. By reviewing the personal statement, I was also able to clarify what sort of person I wanted to portray in my interview, and that helped me become more confident with my answers. The second thing I did was I researched basic interview questions and wrote out what my ideal answer would look like. Here's a list of questions right now, so pause if you'd like to read them, but there's a lot to cover so I'm going to keep going. Let's take a look at my answer to why I come to Central St. Martins. I knew that basic answers would be like because of the location or because of the industry connections and so on and so forth. But everybody likes the location and the, um, and the school's prestige. So what would set me apart? For me, I went more in depth with the location. I knew that being in the middle of a city energizes me. So I wanted to portray that in my interview. For example, I used to live in the center of Rome and sitting on my balcony, looking at people bustling with their own lives down on the streets below me was, it was really humbling and inspiring in a way. I knew that I would be able to get that same type of energy from being in the center of London. I also capitalized on the idea that I'd build a strong inter-industry network, which I'd be able to use to launch my career. I also tried turning it around and saying not only would I benefit from being at the college, but the college would benefit from me being there too. I have a history of putting myself in leader positions, both as a way to engage with a wider community and as a way to push past my comfort zone. For example, I gave my graduating classes salutatory speech, and I was also on two committees in my first year at my old university. Therefore, I figured it's not unreasonable to assume that during my time at Central St. Martins, I would be an active member of the community. Another basic question is, why do you want to study this course? They ask this because they want to understand what your motivations are. They want to get a holistic view as to what type of person you are as an applicant and as a student, as a designer, or as an artist. Everybody wants to study the subject because they're interested, but what sets you apart? Have you discovered, read, or learned anything recently that interests you about the subject? Is there, is there like a driving history of, of your interest in the subject? For example, me and product design, I've always kind of watched I used to watch a lot of how it's made videos. I'd watch those so regularly and they were just really interesting to me. And so I could kind of trace interest within the subject. And that's kind of what led me to being here today. The third thing I did was I came up with a list of relevant questions that I couldn't find answers to online. What this shows is that there's a lot more deeper thinking to my application. And I'm not just applying to go to university. The fourth thing I did kind of ties into the first tip, and it's that I reviewed my course's selection criteria so that I could figure out what strengths I wanted to capitalize on. I figured that I could anticipate questions by leaning into those criteria and really emphasizing them. I can't give specific examples of what I said during my interview because this was back in July and I can't quite remember what I said. But what I'd say is just review your, your whatever access you have to course selection criteria or any things they outline that they look for in an applicant and think about ways you can show that. Think about examples in your application that show those criteria. The fifth thing I did was I tried to anticipate questions that I might be asked and answer them in just one answer. 
by doing this, I was able, I feel like I was able to sort of free up the interviewer and have them labor less over what questions to ask. I was able to connect two projects while, while answering a question about one thing and that l helped the interviewer lead up with another question about the other project. For example, I, I might respond, project A was my favorite so far because I was able to really engage in, in design and learn more about uh, a certain topic that I hadn't learned about before. However, project B would have to be a close second because not only was I able, was, was I able to learn more, but I was able to engage with a new community. And then they might respond up with the following question like, oh yeah, speaking of project B, could you tell me a little bit more about that? How is this, that, like, things will, when you're actually doing the interview, things will flow. And I feel like a lot of people don't give themselves credit for, like, they feel nervous at the beginning, but once they actually get into it, it's, things start clearing up and you find connections that you couldn't find before. Now to answer a few questions from my last video. And just a quick thing, if you're enjoying this video and or you found it helpful, please leave a like because it really shows me, it, it, it tells me what to make more of and I, it, it, also, it also just brightens my day, so. One question I got was, what will the interviewer ask? Now, it's, it's hard to say because really each interview and each applicant is totally different. And so they can ask totally different sets of questions based on what they see in the portfolio and what they see in your personal statement. However, at the end of the day, they're just doing the interview because they want to get a holistic view of you as an applicant. And by having this face-to-face -face thing, they're able to gauge your character your um, and pick up on subtle sort of cues about who you are. The more you practice possible answers, the more confident you become and the better you come across in your interview. Now, another question was, should you practice answers beforehand? And just really definitely, yes, you should. Not only do you become more confident, but you find little connections about yourself and your application that you couldn't see before. And that just makes you more confident in your answers. I used to talk to myself kind of while I was working on my portfolio and I just sort of play two roles as the interviewer and as the interviewee. Now, the last question I got was, how do you stay cool when the interviewer isn't giving much of an emotional response back? Now, this is this is kind of a hard one because I, I guess I got lucky. My interview went pretty smoothly and I enjoyed doing the interview. I like talking about myself at, as a designer and I like talking about my projects. And because I put the prior practice in, for me, it, it kind of just felt like things flowed. And I found, I found the interview to be more of a conversation than a one-on-one -on -one thing where he asks a question and I answer because I also was able to ask questions back that I came up with on the spot. At the end of the day, the interview is about you and you know yourself best. So with a little practice and prep, yours should go smoothly. And with that being said, that's five tips that helped with my interview. If you enjoyed this video and you find any of this advice useful, thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Ciao.